Many of you already know that Prime on iOS is one of my favorite image editing apps. I go to it regularly to very quickly come up with looks that I almost always am going to love. Prime will automatically select a look for you based off of an image analysis, and it makes a list of suggestions, and I usually love one of the top few. So Prime has just been released for the iPad, and it's actually now called Prime Raw. It is a, an app, a version of the app, that will decode the raw file. Now it's pulling out from the iOS raw decoder, adding its own little bit of secret sauce. I think, not quite sure about that part yet. We're gonna do some comparisons against other iOS apps, but we're, we're not gonna do that today. For now, I just wanna look at what you can do in Prime OS. Now, before we get started on this, you can take a look at how it's available. It comes on the iTunes Store, of course. It is a free download, however, it is a subscription model. It is $2.99 per month or $24.99 per year. Now, I do realize that that does seem like a lot if you are downloading regular $1 or $2 apps, then suddenly $25 per year can seem like a lot of money for an image editing app. That said, I've been working with these guys for a while. They were on our podcast last year, and they have continued to improve the app to add new presets to it, and the presets are really, really good. As I mentioned, they are almost always spot on with what they've selected for the app. So if you aren't so sure about it, you can, of course, download the version on iOS on your iPhone. Give it a try there. If you like what you're seeing there, grab the iPad version, pay for one month, and see if you love it. If you love it, sign up for a whole year, and I'm sure that they're going to continue to update. In fact, I know some of the changes that they're already working on. But let's just go ahead and take a look at the app. I'm in the open dialog here, and you'll see that there's three photos, each labeled raw, so we know that each one is a raw file. And let's just go ahead and open up this one of the elephant. These, by the way, are all shot with the GH5 with the Leica 100 to 400 lens. I know that some of you are really interested in this lens and this combination. We'll be talking a lot more about that in a future video coming up pretty soon here on a Photo Justice Photo Moment. Uh, but this is stuff, these shots are all done on this combination, just shot yesterday, in fact, here in Oregon, if you can believe that, at the Wildlife Safari Park. Go figure. So let's see here, first up, first thing I wanna do is do a little bit of basic image adjustment. So this is just the straight up raw file. Down on the bottom, just to the left of the checkbox, you'll see the history marker. And if I open that, you actually see that something's been done already. Now, this is all done automatically. I haven't made any changes to it. This is what happened on open. Now, this image does look to my eye, to my mind, basically what I shot in camera. So we're getting a pretty true representation of the original image in camera here. But you'll see that it does have an original and then a white balance and a tint. And if I hit the original, you'll see it goes back to this overly warm image. There's the white balance added and then a little bit of tint added as well. And again, that just happened on import. So I'm assuming at this point that that is coming from the camera. There's the raw file with its white balance translation on it. I've never actually seen it revealed that way before. So it's interesting to see it here uh, in this interface. But let's get on with the editing. Starting on the bottom left, you can see the adjustments and you'll have your usual suspects here. You've got your brightness sliders. You can just you know, make the image a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, cancel out of that. Highlight, shadow, contrast, white balance, and so on. Now this image is a little bit on the flat side, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and crank up the contrast just a little bit on there. Maybe now that I've done that, I'll bring the exposure up a touch. And I think I'm gonna bring up the sharpness. And at this point, we're gonna see one of the missing features of this app. There's no zoom. I'm pinching right now on the screen and there is no pinch to zoom. This is, this is a big deal to me because if I am taking a high resolution raw image and I guess if all I'm gonna do is put it on Instagram, then I don't need to zoom into 100% to see how sharp it is. But odds are, if I'm gonna do something on my iPad, on my iPad Pro using a raw file that I've transferred over from my professional camera, I wanna be able to zoom into 100% to make sure it really is as sharp as I think it is. So that is one of the first limitations that I've run into. Now I do know that that is a feature that they want to add and I'm sure they'll do it soon, but just so you know, as it stands now, you cannot zoom into 100%. The view that you get right now is the view that you're stuck with. So now that I've added the sharpness all the way up, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a filter by tapping on the filter icon in the bottom middle. And then notice over on the left-hand side, it says all. If I tap on that, I have a list of options here, suggested favorites, all authors and categories. And suggested, of course, is where this thing really shines. I hit suggested, it analyzes the image, and then just chooses a few options for me. And I can tap on each one of these to take a look at what the app is suggesting. And honestly, I think they're all pretty good, but that first one there, descent, I'm really digging that. Now that I've added that, it's feeling a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna go in and take my highlights down just a touch there, maybe even the overall exposure. Let's bring it back down just a little bit. Remember, I did bring that up earlier. 
and we're good to go. I'm going to save that, hit the check mark near the bottom right center, and hit save. It is going to ask if I can save over the original file, but keeping it editable. This, of course, means that we'll be able to go back at any time and revert that raw file to its original. Looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's try another picture. The shot of the bears here definitely needs a little bit of work. Now, the background here is a bit blown out, and this is where we'll see the raw come into play. I'm going to take the brightness all the way down, and we'll see that there is some color back there, a little bit of color, a little bit of detail. Obviously, at this point, the bears are too dark, but we know that the file info is there. So I'm going to kind of split the difference. I'll go a little bit dark to get some of that background back. Maybe take my highlights down a little bit as well. Looking pretty good. And let's see if I can bring the shadows up to recover some of that bare detail in there. There we go. Looking pretty good there. The blacks could tend to go down a little bit, and that is another feature that we're missing. We don't have a black point adjustment, which actually then brings into the third thing that I'll mention, which I think is worth bringing up at this point. There's no histogram in here. Without a histogram, you don't know if you've blown your highlights or crushed your shadows beyond what you can see on the screen. Now, I understand that the app works with the high gamut screens, I do not have one of the latest iPads, so this is the original iPad Pro. So the screens have gotten better in this, revealing even more detail than what I'm seeing and what you're seeing in this recording. But regardless of how good the screen is, you really do want to know technically whether you have clipped your highlights or shadows or not. And unfortunately, we're not seeing that in here. But I do know, again, that this is another feature that they do want to add. So it is what it is. At this point, I'm going to leave the image like that, hit the center button again to bring up the suggestions. It's automatically brought up new suggestions based off of this image. And once again, I can go through these and pick one that I like. And you know what? That first one is looking pretty good again. I think I'll stick with that one. Let's go ahead and save that. After recording the video on Prime Raw the other day, I decided to redo my ending. After I've been talking to the CEO of the company a little bit, I have a little bit of a different conclusion for you. So first off, let's start with the good. Let's start with what I love about Prime Raw. The looks that are designed into this are, I think, fantastic. Pretty much all of them look great, almost no matter what picture you throw them at. But when you use the suggestion engine, what it comes up with, in my opinion, is universally awesome. So that's why I use Prime Raw. That's why I've always used Prime on my phone. It's just a really quick, really easy way to get to a great look on your, on your files. So there's that part of it. The adjustments that are in there, the brightness, contrast, and so on adjustments, are pretty rudimentary. These aren't the most advanced adjustments in the world. And unfortunately, even though we now have the ability to edit raw files, those adjustments, while they can do more to your file, they are still a little bit limiting. For example, you have a brightness slider, but not an exposure slider, and that is quite a bit different. There's no black point, which again is different than contrast. So these kind of missing adjustments are, while not deal breakers, they are important. But there's more to it than that. The inability to pinch to zoom into the photo really hurts for me. I want to be able to do that on my raw files to make sure that they're critically sharp before I process them. I want to make sure that I'm not clipping highlights. So not having a histogram or any kind of clipping indicator is also not such a great thing. Combine those things together and you end up with a raw processor that, while good, is not the best on the market. You can certainly get better raw processing, more advanced raw processing, using other tools like Snapseed or even Lightroom. Now, with that said, you if you look at the app as a not as a way to do your raw processing, but just as a way to treat your images, then that's fantastic and that's fine. So you can do your editing in Lightroom or whatever app you want to use to do your raw decoding and then send it off to Prime Raw to be able to do your look. But herein lies another problem, unfortunately. The ability to access Prime from the share sheet, that's when you're either in the camera roll or pretty much any app when you hit the share button, the ability to share to Prime isn't there. That's not something they've added in and they've explained why and it does make sense, but I still feel that it's a limitation. The problem with the share sheet is that you can't send a raw file to an app via the share sheet. So let's say you're in photos, you've imported your raw files, you pick on a picture that you want to work on. If you hit share to Prime Raw, you wouldn't get the raw file and you may not even realize it. And that is a problem. I totally understand that. But for more sophisticated, more advanced users who are aware of that and are okay with that, I'd like the option to be there. I want to be able to go into Lightroom where I import and, and manage my photos and do some basic raw editing and then send the photo from Lightroom over to Prime Raw for its final look and then bring it back to Lightroom. And unfortunately, that workflow is just a little bit cumbersome now because I don't have that share sheet available. I have to save it to the camera roll and then go into Prime Raw, open it up and do the work there. 
And at that point, we get into another shortcoming of Prime Raw, and that is the fact that we cannot copy and paste our settings from one picture to many. This is something you have on the iPhone version, and I know for a fact that this is going to be in the iPad version fairly soon. I say fairly soon, they haven't given me a timeline, but I know that it's close, and we'll leave it at that. So that will be coming. And with that in mind, this brings us to the final piece about this, the final thing I want to mention, and that's the fact that you're paying a subscription for this. Now, I know some users absolutely can't stand subscription models, and some think that that's a great way to go. And I, you know, whatever your opinion on it is on that, that's fine. The idea behind a subscription model, though, is, of course, that the developer continues to get funding to continue to develop the app. They don't feel like they have to release a major new version to charge for that to bring in more money to continue funding the next version. So the subscription model allows a constant flow of income so that the company can continue to develop. Now, you look at a company like Prime, and they're small. It's just a few people. They're not Adobe. They're not Apple. They're not Facebook. They're not Google. So they don't have infinite funds to throw at doing something like this. It's pretty well bootstrapped, this company. They've got, they're a small team, they work really hard, and I know this because I have come to know some of the team members, and I know how much work and love they put into this app. So with that in mind, if you're the type who looks at this app and says, you know, this is awesome, and I know it's going to get better, and I have faith in that, go ahead and contribute. Pay the subscription fee, help them get this app to where you want it to be, and send in your feedback. They're absolutely open to feedback. They want to hear from you, but they already know some of the major things that are missing. The, the reason, in case you're wondering, that the app is different on iPad as it is from on iPhone is it is a complete rewrite. I don't actually know why they had to completely rewrite it, but they told me that they did. So that tells us that there's a lot of work from the beginning, starting over again, essentially, to get the iPad version of RAW as good as the iPhone version. And it's not quite there yet. It has more, right? It has raw processing, which we don't have on the iPhone, but there's a lot of other features missing. So again, I think it's a great app. I'm going to continue to use it. I do love the looks out of it. And when I'm working on my iPad and I want to be able to apply one of those looks quickly, quickly and easily, I know that I can do it here. I do wish that there were some better workflow methods in there. I do wish that there were some more features, but what's in there is really good. And we know that it's only going to get better. <laughs>